Marshall launches for three. Oh, and what a big basket. Back to Redwood. Miranda takes, fires, gets it out. It is being fought for. Oh. And it is won by Cardona with 2.2 seconds to go. There's the quick inbound. John launches. Dan Gamasal is champion of season 67. Itong champion na ito, itong purpose niya ito, kaya niya ko na saan. Parang maganda ang pag-inspirito sa FDU. They have a big appetite, so they don't get satisfied. Now it's a reality. One more step, hopefully we can defend it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are basically back where we were at this exact time last year with season 67. The two protagonists from last year's finals will be at it again. But very different stories for these two storied schools and two storied teams. For one team, the FBU Tabaraos went through the elimination field in dominating fashion, sweeping through the first round and finishing off the competition to maintain its number one status throughout the tournament. For the other team, the De La Salle Green Archers, struggling through the first round to find themselves battling for just number five or the number four spot, and then pulling off crucial, albeit controversial wins, peaking at the right time, as always, to finish their tournament strong and get the chance to defend their crown. Ladies and gentlemen, the rematch is on. FDU versus Rasal. Game number one of the finals of season 68 of the UAAP. Philippines and among the Deafening noise here, the capacity crowd at the Big Dome. Two teams have a mission to accomplish. They're gonna zone that noise out to try to win the big one. The championship of the season 68 of the UAAP. And you're watching us live on Studio 23. A pleasure to be hosting this game for you. I'm Boom Gonzalez alongside DJ Barotok. And DJ, FU has a chance to erase the stigma of season 67 now. Exactly, this is all about revenge. For the time around, they want to exact just that today. And they're hoping that even with this new look team, without Coach Koy Bernal, without Dennis Miranda, they can do what they wanted to do since the start of season 68. All right, DJ, since you were talking about things that they want to do, let's focus on the imperatives yep. of both the teams that are going into battle here at the Big Dome. Well, let's pick it up with DLSU first and see what 
I feel LaSalle has to do to win this game and particularly for the rest of the series. First of all, very important for them to box out and gang rebound. Secondly, outside shooting has to click very early, even for their big men, and force the turnovers and pile up those easy turnover points. Now you look at LaSalle, they're not that good a team compared to FEU. It's gonna be very crucial for them to fight height with their might. They gotta box out and gang rebound. Guys like Isip, Santos, Porcelano, Mangas, they are playing splendid basketball this whole season. They are just so strong off the boards. They have to fight them and not allow them the rebound, especially on the offensive end, because FU is the best in second chance points when it comes to getting those offensive rebounds and easy put back. Secondly, they got to shoot up from the outside. Lasalle has lit them down with outside shooting, right? and they've lived very well, especially in this last six games that they've won straight since they lost to FU. In the second round, they won every single game they played. You can even make it a seven-game winning streak if you want to count that game that was nullified against UE. Forcing turnovers and getting easy turnover points is Nassau's bread and butter. Yes. And this is something they were not able to do against FEU in their first encounter, which they lost by seven points. But they did this in their second encounter, where they only lost by one point. It was almost a win for Nassau, right. and they had 22 turnover points. That's something that Nassau has to achieve in this series. Now we go over to FEU, That's right. and let's see what they need to do. FEU, of course, dominating Lasalle in Season 16. They've won both times in their two meetings. Exactly. Now, for FEU, I feel they got to hit the inside early. Secondly, they got to have quick defensive rotation, get a hand in every DLSU shooter's face, and they got to limit their turnovers. They cannot give DLSU points on a silver platter. Big men are the big advantage of, of FEU. Arwin Santos, Mark Isip, even guys like Mangas and Barciliano have improved so much this season. That is their big advantage. Get their high percentage shots inside, hit them early, open up the outside for the guards. Quick dispenser rotation. You know, LaSalle, if they get hot, they're going to wax up. They got to move around very quickly. LaSalle likes to move that ball very well. They're very unselfish on the perimeter. FEU has to do a very good job of getting a hand in every shooter's face. And they got to limit their turnovers. FEU is not a very experienced squad in terms of their backcourt. Jonas Villanueva, remember, is a rookie. They're not very deep in their backcourt. Sometimes Chan and Rizada even have to play point guard. Without Dennis Miranda, he's not an experienced backcourt, no longer for FEU. They have to limit their turnovers. They cannot allow LaSalle easy points on the fast break. All right, let's get this thing on the road right now. Game number one of the finals of season 68. Coach Frank Momada looking for his sixth title in eight years, while Coach Bert Flores looking for his first in his rookie year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on your screen, the starting five brought to you by Polo. Life's a whole lot cooler with Polo. We're back here at the Big Dome watching us live on Studio 23 and lahat po ng ating kababayan watching us over the TFC. Good day and welcome to the coverage brought to you by abs CBN Sports. Coach Bert Flores on his rookie year steering the FBU Tamaraos back in the finals. And speaking of the finals, TJ, LaSalle has been in the five of the last six, while FEU wow. four of the last six. So we wanted to find out this little number and to show how consistent the two programs have been in the last six, five or six years. Awesome. Just awesome the way we have been able to continually bring in talent, improve the talent, and bring it all the way to the highest level of the UAP year after year after year. First turnover. And again, one of the departments that we will look at throughout this game is the turnover department. And the first courtesy of MBU. And a foul also on Fernandez. Well, Fernandez has his work cut out for him. He's not a usual starter for Coach Bert Flores, but the last time they met against La Salle, he was tasked to start primarily because he is a good defender and he is Coach Bert Flores' hope of limiting or even stopping Joseph Hill. My bad, it's Benedict Fernandez. Yep. Jonathan Fernandez from the National University. Still no points on the board for either school. Kabatu, the main man for La Salle in terms of everything, actually, as he fakes off Santos, puts it up, and in! 
Sun Kabatu having a great season 68, and he starts off well here in the finals. You know, if you're an Archer fan, you would love the way Kabatu has matured and grown up into the role that German Gakko left for him. And then some, and some more. You know, Sun Kabatu is just, yes, he's the best rebounder, but he's done so much for the team. Arwin Santos overshoots way off the mark, and the ball will roll to Lasal. Arwin Santos, we had the chance to interview him. You had the chance to interview him in our respective shows, DJ, yeah. and pretty much the same thing. He came back to season 68 to win with this mission at hand. Exactly, this is what exactly what he wanted. In fact, we spoke to Mark Molina yesterday on Sports Report, and he said, in the last two practices of FEU, he has never seen Arwin Santos as focused and as hardworking, as determined as he was. Not to say that he's not hardworking, it's just that he even stepped it up a little bit more. Let's go to Mickey Dallas for a Samson courtside update for the Green Archers. Mickey? The Archers know what many are saying about their chances, so they start the series by playing with a purpose. It is when in a position such as theirs that the strength of the team and its members shine through. Boom, this team has become a family bound by a dream, and leaders like Joseph T.Y. and June have become men of encouragement and faith for their teammates. Like a doting father, Coach France, along with the rest of the staff, have not just conditioned the boys physically, they've trained them to become victors of adversity. Many may think that DLSU doesn't have the best players in the league, but for Coach France, these are the right players for him and for LaSalle. Boom. Thank you very much. Uh, just like Coach France Pumares, Mickey Dellas in the finals has been there and done that too. Yep. Marcellano breaks the ice for FEU. Even though he is that big and tall and heavy, the guy's tight on his feet and he can move. That was a nice thing that uh, we, I, I picked up from the report that Coach Fran said, I may not have the best players in the league, but the these right are the players player. that I want. These are the right players for my system. A delivery by, uh, or two, Marcellano, one of the candidates for assist of the game, delivered by KFC. Back to the ball game, Green with the ball. Joseph Yo committed his first personal foul just a while back. Gives it up to his partner, Ryan Aranya. Puts it on the floor, the trap on Aranya. Underneath, too dark, just too dark. as Arwin Santos. But look at LaSalle not giving up. The Yo taking it buzzer back. went off. Let's see, yes. 10 seconds ago, nobody saw it. Assistant coach Oliver of FU was the one jumping up and down. I think he was the only one in the whole gym, aside from me, who saw it. No zero. The red lights went on on the rim. The referees did not see it at all. After this block, you'll see the red lights go up. The nice and the shot shot goes off. And a light, uh, another shot block brought to me by Polo. Likes a whole lot cooler with Polo. Well, as we said in the pregame, noise is deafening here in the big goal. Rizada with the three-point play opportunity. Well, that is that is a re that is reminiscent of how Ateneo break the break, uh, breaks the Lasalle press. Rizada with just fake going to the ball. Aquino overplayed a little bit too much, and there's the over-the-shoulder pass, and that's really difficult to stop once you get a couple of steps ahead of your defender. The fast break brought to you by Milo. Drink Milo every day. We also find found out DJ that FDU has been practicing here at the Big Dome. Trying to get used to this place a little bit more as if they're not yes, so used yeah. to it. 12 wins this season. And then, of course, the crowd makes it a whole different ball game. I just remembered after that last block of Arwin Santos earlier, in their second encounter, I think that was the season high and career high of Santos in blocks. He had eight shot blocks in that game. He only had 16 points, but he had 16 rebounds and eight blocks. He was an all-around defensive monster. He broke that seven-shot block uh, record of Japan Aguilar yep. this season. And as usual, the inside is dominated by FBU. Nice Great pass. pass. Yep. Oh, Rizada traveled. Bad timing of his footwork there, but it was a good pass. Rizada just did not catch it at the right spot. All right, let's uh, check out another Samson courtside update as we welcome Yvette Cavieras to the finals of the UAAP. All right, have Amidst having a more experienced and stronger lineup for Eastern University, Cameroons are still keeping their fingers crossed. Though they have been preparing a lot for this day, the memories of last season flashes back. What happened last year became the motivation to work doubly hard in this first game. Moreover, a few words from Coach Bert Flores. They must keep their focus and play the game with a fighting heart. Boom. Thank you very much, Yvette. Joining us here in the UAP. The emotions are high. The UAP finals, rather. The emotions are high in this ballgame. You know, you 
made a perfect point in terms of the backcourt of FEU. Well, do they have you know, enough composure to yep. deal with the crowd, with the pressure, with the pressure from the crowd, the pressure from the backcourt of La Salle? And you know, when you go back to Coach Franz Pumarin's uh, lineup, he said something like, um, you know, he's got the right materials. When you speak of materials, TJ, these are the kind of materials that he has won with already. So in the meantime, as we said, emotions are very high on the floor as Arwin Sarkas draws the foul, a dangerous foul actually yep. from Ryan Aranya. First, let's check out our Smart Buddy Instant Replay. Smart Buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. Imagine the undercut. They have no play, play on the ball anymore. You know, as tough and as intense a defender Aranya has been throughout his career in the UAP, he's had a bit of a reputation for those uh, dangerous fouls here and there, but it's not that he intends to do them. And Arwin went back at him right yeah. after he made the shot and clapped, applauded in front of his face. I think Arwin's also, you know, already mature enough and done everything here in the UAP to play the kind of mind game that mind games that a lot of the players play here at this level. Yeah. And you know, that's what separates the men from the boys in this league. It's, it's when you can get out of the box and play at a, a, a level of composure and focus amongst, amidst all this intensity and craziness on the court and around you in this kind of season. As he completes the three-point play, Arwin Santos, when I, when I got to talk to him, he says he doesn't recognize pressure in the UAB. Pressure is in his life back then. That's an awesome story. So this is nothing to him. This is all play to him. Exactly. Yo, twirling. Almost got the shot. Mariano comes away. Or make that Villanueva, rather. Comes away with a loose ball, but helter skelter play at J.R. Aquino. So Villanueva with a turnover as he's pumped from behind by Araya. Abato with the fake. He goes up and doesn't get the bucket, but that is a smart play again by Kabatu. Plays with this man. Yep. So far, it's been Kabatu who has been showing some pretty good composure and pretty good decision making in this game, as early as it is, only barely four minutes gone by. 6-18 remaining, the lead is four for FEU. The last time they were champs, they beat Macaneo. Year 2000. Three, FU with already four turnovers. Coach Franz Pumarin and his boys with two. So far in this game. The inside is a sticky situation, sticky place to be for the Dallas Saw Green Archers. So as much as possible, in that game two that all, they almost won, the day, they really tried to run and shoot well from the outside. They tried to run as much as they can, but it didn't succeed on exactly, the defense. Exactly. Yeah. And they did that in the second quarter when they caught up. Remember, yes, yes. the first quarter was 26 to 9. It was a it was all total FU. domination by FU in the first quarter, but then Lasalle had the run. And they forced their turnovers, they got their fast break points. As we said, they ended up with 22 turnover points in that game, which they lost only by a point, 70 to 69. And that was way back in August 21, more than a month ago. FBU, fifth turnover of the ballgame. Barcelona is out. Mark Isip is back in. Cabatu and Arwin Santos. Cabatu. Arwin doesn't fight this time. Under six minutes to play. Seven seconds remaining on the shot clock. And Fernandez tries to keep his composure and lays it up and in. Abawe, he almost lost the ball, almost lost his footing, but got it right in the nick of time, right in front of the rim, and was FBU's biggest lead so far. Much has been said, and will be said, about the main man, Arwin Santos. Phenomenal athlete, phenomenal numbers. Look at that, 12.9 points a game, fifth in the league. 12 rebounds per game, number one in the league, and 2.4 blocks per game, second in the league only to Jabet Aguilar. What awesome numbers again for Arwin Santos in his last tour of duty for FU, and he wants to end this awesome career with another crown. He has had a stellar college and amateur career, both in the UAB and the PBL. Rizada hangs tough. 
Mark Eason with a favorite shot of his, and he also draws the foul. So again, dominating the inside yep. are the Bamara. That was our first imperative for FEU. Hit the inside early, and that is exactly what FEU is doing now. They have some points on the fast break off the turnovers of the shot. Mark Eason, instant offense. He just comes off the bench for Barcelona, and right off the bat gets the bucket and the foul to boot. Smart Buddy instant replay is what you just saw. Smart Buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. And Mark Eason fresh off the bench, contributing three points. Yes, that's right, right away. Lasalle is behind by seven. Ask me how many times Mark Eason started this year. How many? None. None? None. <laughs> he has been the sixth man of Coach Bird for Well, we wanted to balance out the rotation of the big men. And he wants to start with Barcelona, even though Isip would end up with four minutes in total. I remember Coach Mark Molina did say that their main problem with Mark Isip is he runs out of breath right away. So, I just want to pin the pacing. And Arwen down all throughout the game, he knows how to, yes. See, Mark is go, go, go from the, from the start that he comes on the floor. Joseph Hill finally strokes a jumper in. First triple of the ball game for LaSalle and he cuts the lead down a 4, 13 to 9. Four thirty remaining. Jeffrey Jack sidestepping. And Kabatu taps it over to Joseph Yo. Yo on the break to Ryan Aranyo on the other side. Aranya did exactly what he loves to do, going for the reverse layup. Very difficult to stop because Aranya has that very quick release on those reverse layups of his with the Magic Pectus. And again, there's something about left hand here. So yep. this one, really tough to block. Meyerhofer off the bench for De La Salle. The lead is only two. Kabatu has Mark Isip on him. He knows that he can shoot the three every now and then. Yo again against Benedict Fernandez. Yo hands it over to D. White Bang, who just celebrated his birthday last week. Nothing there. The rebound scramble wow. going to Ryan Aranya. Look First at the hustle. Look at the hustle on that play. If you talk about positioning, he lost it on that play, but he got the ball out of sheer determination. We go back to Yo for another three. Gets oh, it to go! You can't ask for any better defense from Fernandez. He had a hand in Joseph Yo's face. Yo just shot right over him and jumped right over his head. And as you mentioned, DJ, when Nassal is on the floor against that view, they've got to knock down those smart buddy threes. Joseph Yo finally finding his touch here in this game. Look at the numbers wow. against Ateneo coming to play in the final four. I was in that uh, one game final four. Of course, they won in one game. Awesome performance by Joseph Yo. The third in quarter, DJ yeah. had 15 points wow. in that third. Huge numbers for Yo. And he's got to be on if they want to win against an FEU team that's got numbers that can produce numbers from a lot of people. Exactly. Well, right off the bat, Jeff Chan with. J.P. Casho comes on the floor. They want to exploit that mismatch inside and try to get straight to Casho to the basket. Casho is uh, make that LaSalle is two out of two from beyond the arc. Make that two out of three. Aranya with a short stab. You cannot give LaSalle second chances like that. Especially Aranya around the basket. You've got to be wary of him. He's not a very quick rebounder, but he likes to get good position. Isip has the ball knocked away and a foul called on a green archer. Well, Mark Isip got that rebound in the middle of four green shirts. That's what Coach Franz Pumare must be talking to his boys about right now. He's not happy with that kind of an offensive rebound. As you see, national coach Trot Reyes, a very interested spectator, looking out for the future, the future talent of this country. And a lot of it is on the floor right now. You know, when the lead was 13 and 6 earlier, Lasalle uncorking an 8 to 0 run, which Jeffrey Chan diffused with his turnaround jumper. Then Ryan Aranya with the basket. Now we are at 16 to 15. Lasalle with the lead, just in case you just joined us. As we see Denok Miranda on her screens. I'm sure, uh, you know, a deep heart. Miss. Yes, and a heartbreaking miss. Yeah. Speaking of miss, that, that was in and out. Off win. the glass. And it just ripped out. A winning shot. Was it for, for a tie? Or for was, no, it was for the win. They lost, they lost by a point, right? Season 67 memories of 
Season 67. Was that close. Yes. That close. This is the rematch, ladies and gentlemen. LaSalle and FEU one more time around the block. Now it's Sandua trying to put the clamps on Joseph Yo. Joseph Yo had nowhere to go, but hey, Jamie Nasho's first attempt from short distance finds his mark, and Yo comes up with a smile. Meyerhofer trying to break up the play. And FEU fans wanted to travel and call the Yo as he sort of passed that ball as almost at the same time as he landed his feet on the ground. Harvey Mangas on your screen. I don't know why. This challenging matchup is anything going on. Added mobile profile substitution. Added mobile prepaid. Now you're in. Siguro kapag pinadrive-an siya, yung gusto nyo sa pagpalitin niya, masupal pa. May hirap na naman. Yo, yun siguro yun. Villanueva still with the leather. Sends it out. They have seven on the shot clock. That's short. Great defense by LaSalle yes. in that play. That was good patience by FU, but a good challenge by Kabatu. Yo on the run. He was pushed from behind by Saldua. And Yo seems to be very challenged yes. at this juncture. And you get that sense that Joseph Yo is so offensive-minded off the bat. He is not here to pace himself. Every touch he gets, he is looking at the basket, whether it's going to be a drive, whether it's going to be a three-point jump shot, even with a hand in his face, he's looking to score right away for Lasal. Lasal is two out of three after that free throw shot. But field goals, though, they are seven out of eight. Mac Cardona. Well, he knows how it feels to be in this situation in finals many times. Yo accords the second. They're now three out of four. And Joseph Yo will take his breather at the 145 mark of this first quarter. The bench coming into play now for both teams. And both teams have quality benches. Yes, they do. Especially with the way Nassau matured their bench last year and this year. They're not as experienced as FU's. But in the short span of time that they've had success last year and this year, boy, they are very, very experienced players now in coming into this final series. We also have to consider the coaching angle here, TJ. Oh, yes. It's something we cannot overlook. The fact that Coach Burke, as I said earlier, in his very first finals, this is his rookie year as a head coach. And you can throw all the stats out the window. The 12 and 2 was an elimination, yeah. but the finals is a different story. Coach Boy Banal, of course, the last coach of FPU. Being able to win a championship for them. Kasha takes it away. Gets it up to PJ Barua. Doesn't have enough space. Lasalle trying to recover and trying to reset the table right now. Chan, let's go of Kasha who hits it and sets that baby home. Just a split second, PJ. What a shot by JB Kasha. You know, I've been seeing this a lot. Kasha and E. White Dan. Through this year, they have been working very hard on their step-back three-pointers. And they, little by little, have been improving a whole lot on those shots. It's a difficult shot to hit in basketball, folks. And an offensive foul on Saldua. Now, I, I read, and I may be wrong, DJ, but this is also his first finals yep. appearance. As Kasha knocks down the three, he is 30% from that field. Another smart buddy three, the number one prepaid service in the country. Remember, it was JB Kasha's big shot last year that won it for the Salas. You see Mark Benitez on the floor for our Addict Mobile substitution. Addict Mobile prepaid, now you're in. 26 seconds remaining, and it's a Saldua again, back to back fouls as he tries to snatch the ball away from J.B. Castro. The number two on the other end of the stick, it's J.B. Castro. Now he gigants a mismatch there with Saldua because he knows he has the advantage in speed. He wants to either drive past him or fake the drive and step back for the three as he did earlier. And Saldua is kind of clueless right now as how he's going to try and defend J.B. Castro. When you talk about FU, there's no question about guys like Arwin Santos, Mark Eason, maybe Arby Mangas, Chan, Rizada. What you have yet to find out, or we all have yet to find out, if Villanueva, Saldua, De La Cruz have, if Fernandez have what it takes to play at this level. Exactly. They I mean, I'm sure they do, yeah. but, you know, to respond in a pressure-packed situation yep. like this. It's the kind of composure and the heart 
that you got to have on this floor at this level when it's the championship series already. And that's why La Salle, with all its disadvantages, when it gets when it gets uh, itself to the finals, it's just a whole different ball game exactly. playing against them. Exactly. Their experience and their system, and the material. Look what? at Cholo Villanueva with his second strip of the ball game. Meyer Hopper picking it up. Risky move there by Marquis and tried to dribble past the smaller guys of the side. That is the third time, actually, TJ, that they've forced Marquis oh, to dribble the ball. So obviously it's a, it's a ploy. Well, he's one guy who can break the press for FE. He's got good ball handling skills against the big men of the side. But once he crosses half court, he shouldn't break it all the way and go to the basket. From there, he's got to give it up to their guards. They have to set up their play. They have to remember and realize that in the half-court set, they have the advantage. They're bigger. They're stronger. They got to hit the inside and execute properly and not force those fast breaks that they don't have right in front of their face. 24-17, a La Salle advantage as JV Kasha looks to pound on it some more. Kasho, an 89% shooter from the 15th parallel line. The best shooter from that area for La Salle. And look at this, Kasho already with eight points, looking for nine as he came in the game halfway through this first quarter, coming off the bench, giving a breather to T.Y. Tan. So talk about the instant offense that J.P. Kasho is bringing right now for Coach Franz Gumara. And here's the story of the first quarter, especially in the last half. Five offensive rebounds, eight second chance points, nothing for FEU, negating the advantage in rebounding. Villanueva is short, and a foul from behind from Arby Malas. You know, the move, the last, I'd say, four or five possessions of FEU. Nothing good. They have all been tentative, forced shots. It's not. Does it seem like it's something that they wanted to execute? Does it seem like it's something they wanted to call for? And the kind of best shot that they could look for. They are getting a little bit rattled here towards the down the, the down stretch of this first quarter. And they're, they're losing out on it. Hassan is now erecting their biggest lead of the game. It's now 10 points. You know, speaking of 10, it's a 10-0 run before that free throw since the 2-11 mark. Kasho, nine points wow. in that 10-0 run. Yo had the other one point, and again delivering in the finals. And now Meyerhofer knocking down two free throws. Assist to turnover ratio, if you're interested, TJ. Seven to three on LaSalle, three to six. A great number for LaSalle, only three turnovers. The seven assists as Chan forces it up. And the first quarter ends on a green note, so to speak. LaSalle, after falling behind by seven early in this game, six to 13, took out J.V. Casho, buried a couple of threes, maybe. And now they're up by 11, 28-17. This is game number one of the finals. We'll be back. Back here in the big goal for second quarter action as NBU tries to come back with a three-point shot right off the bat. And Benedict Fernandez stroking it in to cut the lead down to eight. Don't think Awa Padon. Maybe not smiling on FE with the start of the second quarter. You'll take that. <laughs> Especially with the way LaSalle jumped to this big lead within the last two and a half minutes of the first quarter. DJ, are you surprised that LaSalle is playing this well in the first quarter. They usually start off slow when they go up against FEU. Not at all. Lasal has always had the kind of confidence that no matter how big they go down, they can come back. Remember, they were down 26 to 9 in the first quarter of that second round encounter That's against right. FEU. They almost won that game. That's right. Santos with another three. Rims out. The offensive rebound by Mark Isab and the foul called on Rico Meyerhofer, possibly. That's great positioning there by Mark Isip and bad boxing out by Meyerhofer as Isip has got what he wanted. So our first quarter rebound. In the meantime, our final waiver matchup. Solid thought, Jeffrey Chan, Joseph Yo. Those are the points. I have video games. That's the moving uh, graphics. I have not I have video games. Reminding me of uh, NBA Live. Worldwide release yesterday, by the way, for those video game fanatics out there. All right, let's send it over to Yvette Gavieras for a Samsung courtside update. Yvette? 
We shouldn't be giving up, guys, according to the players. We must show them what we really got. The Tamar are not communicating inside the court. That's why they cannot come up with a play. Also, Coach Ben Flores wants his boys to call a play. He, wants, he also wants to increase the pressure on the especially on Yo and Gasho. Thank you very much, Yvette. Well, what a shot by John wow. Villanueva. Almost another turnover? Yes, it is. it is. That was off the foot of Arvin Santos. You know, Meyer Hoffer, Benitez, Cabatu, and even uh, the other big men of the South, they are not afraid to show the pressure defense full court against Santos and Isi. Oh, look at that. The dipsy do by Cholo Villanueva, the left-handed dipsy do on Arwin Santos and Mark Isip, no less. Casio again. Wow. Rims out. Cholo, right place at the right time. Just fell right into his hands. But look at Nasal who really setting themselves up for three-point shots. Uh, it's not a second option in their play. They're looking for these shots. Off the screen, pick and roll, pop jump shot. Running off the, the weak side screen for Joseph, your catch and shoot yes. jump shot from three. This has been their priority. They're letting them hit those outside shots with the big green license right there, as, as opposed to normally a three point shot is something secondary. Kapag drive ka, maipit ka, pick out, you're free, you take the three. But so far, they have been setting themselves up from beyond the arc. All right, let's go to Vicky Dallas for a Samsung courtside update from LaSalle. Vicky? Contain and maintain that's what the archers have to do to the Tamrows. They have to contain the Tamrows main men, but at the same time, they have to make sure that the rest of the FBU squad don't do any damage. Coach Fran stressed the importance of constant movement on offense and on defense. He wants the archers to stay in front of their men. He told his team that every single possession is important. More importantly, the archers were reminded, as they were reminded last Sunday, that for games like this, it's all hard, no egos. Lou? Thank you very much, Vicky. They're showing it. Every possession really counts to them right now. They're, they're executing pretty well. 13 perimeter points for the zone to the 5 of FEU. And in the paint, they're not far behind. 10 to 8 to exactly. the FEU. And remember, as you said earlier, those 13 points are not secondary option points yeah. na, na libre. I'll yeah. take it. Yeah. Yeah. Talaga, a lot of those points came with hands in their faces. A lot of those points were outside shots with good defense by FEU. They're just hitting them on the ball. Second personal foul on Rico Meyer Hopper as we check out another Polo shot clock. Wow. Benitez likes a whole lot cooler with Polo. Not an easy guy to block. We're talking about Mark Isip. Another turnover? Well, let's see. You know, the ball possession will go to FEU. Almost lost it. You know, Jonathan Fernandez did what you should not do when you try to break Lasalle's press, is to dribble to another defender. He dribbled right to the direction. Oh, did I say Jonathan again? <laughs> Benedict, you That's started it. That's my fault. That's my fault. <laughs> Benedict. Okay, there you go. I'll just think of breakfast. Eggs Benedict. <laughs> Benedict for them. Eight-minute mark of the second quarter. Trying to put pressure on Villanueva. He gives it up. Arwin from way out. Wow. He's been trying. That is his third miss from beyond the arc. But FBU recovering. Oh, call here. Away from the ball. Mark Isip. That's the first personal of Mark Isip right there. Still a big 10-point lead for LaSalle. Arwin Santos not able to put his team on his shoulders just yet. Only with three points in the game. That, I think, was early in the first quarter when he got that, those three points. Actually, it's yeah, a zero out of four from downtown. So he's really struggling. Yo, sends it out to nobody. Cholo picking it up, finds oh, a way. Oh, oh. Just comes up short. Capato oh. is clobbered underneath. LaSalle tries again. And three, Emilio Tavaraz for that recovery. But look at LaSalle quickly back on defense. They find Fernandez, but Fernandez could not handle the shot. He was in too deep. And he, he was nervous there. He panicked under the basket. And another bad foul by Fernandez. He committed a couple of bad ones earlier in the first quarter. Now this is his third foul. Yes. Which and will render him ineffective on defense against His Leo. fouls have to count. It can't be fouls high above the perimeter where it's practically useless to give a good foul. And the block on Kabatu, a, sh a polo shot block. That's a whole lot cooler with polo. But possession still with the green archers who are also protecting a 10-point lead. 31-21.
JV puts it on the floor, steps back for three. Nothing there. Chola tracks down the loose ball. They give it back to Yo. He wants to drive on everybody else. Wow. No fear whatsoever. Joseph Yo has come into this game and said, I'm going to be the scoring machine. Right now, Joseph Yo with nine points, leading all scores for the South, tied with JV Casho. 33 21. He is three out of six Ooh. in the game, and another turnover for FBU, and they are imploding here in the first half, and they're looking for the referees to build it. In the meantime, a power move powered by new Revicon Ion Energy Drink with Dishon Ion dismantling for FEU Tamaraos and route to that basket. And why did that start? Boom, because the guy got him, he has three fouls. Exactly. He couldn't stay with him anymore. Fernandez just let him through, like rolling out a red carpet. Because if he does commit another foul, that would be his fourth. Four, exactly, now he's pulled out of the game. And Paul Flores is in the game to try his darnest best to try and shadow Joseph Yo. Turnover by LaSalle and a block ball on J.B. Casho. That was close. And even Villanueva knew it was close. He, could, he knew that it could have gone underway. Back, back in the ball game for J.B. Casho. Second personal foul on Casho. has got nine first quarter points. Ty, as you said, Joseph Yo for leading scorer honors. You know, LaSalle's defense has just been really on today. And in particular, their perimeter defense is what's limiting FU. They're not giving them the outside shots. And it's the perimeter defense group that's not allowing them easy passes inside. Hindi mabigyan ng bola yung mga big men ng FU because the harassing defense of LaSalle on the perimeter is just so good. Joseph Yo had Arwen Santos on him, but not put up the shot. Green is back on defense. FU unable to run. They had five fast break points earlier. Tough shot wow. by Arwin Santos, but the spin, the back spin, enabling that ball to just find its way through the hole. And you'd consider that sort of a forced shot yes. from 14 feet fading away with Benitez in his face. Dang finds Benitez. 15 footer is over the mark. And Cholo again picks up the loose ball without any effort. He's been lucky. Right place at the right time a couple of times already. Abatu. Benitez puts it on the floor. Oh, nice groove wow. on Arwin Santos. You realize Santos was recovering towards yes. it. Nakita niyo yung footwork ni Santos. Medyo alang nga rin sabi niya, sige, papasukan ko to. Nothing cute though about the lead of Lasal. If you're from MBU or if you're cheering for them, they are behind by 10. 33-23, 5-22 remaining in the second quarter. And boom, offense has been the problem for FU. Buti na lang for them. Their defense is pretty much holding up. They're only allowing 33 points for Lasal. Yes, Lasal has a now 11-point lead, but at least... With the way they're playing offense, this could be an even bigger lead if not for the way they're playing their defense. And the FEU has only scored about six points since the 2-11 mark of the first quarter. That's a, that's a struggle right there. Yep. Pretty much a famine hitting the Tamaraos. They have nowhere to go with seven seconds. Again, that point that you made of DJ that FEU seems to be thriving on offense that is pressured. Yep, panicky. Oh, panicky offense. They gotta go back to the basics. They gotta go back to where the strengths are. They gotta go inside. They have to find a way, execute a play to get the ball to their big men at the right spots, not outside all the time. Look at this pass. Ivana's 30 from the basket. That's a good pass right there. It's been rare to get something like that. And they're only going to get those if they execute well. They can't just run around in circles and hope LaSalle's defense weakens. It's not going to happen. LaSalle is going to be in their face 40 minutes of this game. They have to set screens and get their guys open. And then speaking of the execution, again, that's where the backcourt, the point guard uh, factor comes in. And so far, FBU's point guard in Jonas Villanueva has not really shown the stability that they need here in a championship atmosphere. And you know, you hate to compare to what they lost, but in, in situations like these, back in the day, Dennis Miranda would take over. 
He can't set up his teammates. He'll create something for himself. He'll find a way to break down the defenders of LaSalle and get himself to the basket. And it's that kind of leadership, timely leadership. Dennis is not a, an all-time scorer, but he's very timely with his shots. That's what they're missing. Yo attacking Arwin Santos. He knew how he was going to get Arwin Santos on that play. And Arwin, even now defensively, is not at his best. Yes. Benitez drives against him, gets a foul in the basket. Now, Joseph Yo. That's an obvious foul. Marcelliano. And Cabatu commits his first personal. That's also one thing I like about Jun Cabatu. He plays as much as he does. And yet, he averages like close to 27 minutes a game. Heavy minutes. And uh, he guards guys like Arwin Santos, Martinez, But he rarely gets the foul trouble. What does that say about, you know, a player like him? Smart defense. He plays defense on the perimeter with his feet, not with his hands. He challenges the shots in the paint with his hands only. You see a picture of Coach Bert Flores. Looking concerned. Yep. Now, LaSalle has always showed the ability to come back. But FBU is a different story, especially here in Season 68. I'm not saying they can't, but in Season 68, more often than not, 99% of the time, they were leading. And at the times the they've been down, especially in the game, they've lost them, those games. UE and Ateneo were the only teams that beat them, and those are the only teams that ever had a lead against them. Jonas Villanueva playing two years, I believe, for the FPU Tamarau. So next year will be his last year yep. already. So much has been said about the guy. And you also kind of feel for the guy. A lot of pressure on his shoulders. Iwai Tang to Kabato against Jeffrey Chan. That's a mismatch right there. Kabato knows it. But oh. Kabato had the ball wow. swatted away. Santos travel. He did not expect the pass. He was not uh, looking. He wasn't even looking. He wanted to run and get to his spot right away and thought trying to dribble it all the way. Jeffrey Chan apologizing for the errant pass. Again, another turnover. Costly one. At the 4-12 mark. Let's look at this look at Polo this. shot clock. Brought to you by Polo. Life's a whole lot cooler with Polo. He just used his height and extended that shot. Yo finding Jun Jun. Jun Jun unable to find the oh. hole. But because Arwin Santos went out to Jun Jun Cabatu, Mark Benitez was left open for the offensive putback. And Barcelona was not there to help any of them out. He should have done his part and went for that defensive rebound, but Benitez just walked right in. The lead is a Baker's dozen. Aranya diving. Arwin picking it up, putting up the three. That's short. And a foul called probably in Barcelona who nudged away Joseph Yo. Arwin was Santos is doing what he, he he's trying his best, but he has to pick his spots. It can't be all three-point shots. I, I don't have the numbers now, but I'm guessing Santos is what? Like zero for six from beyond the arc. Yes, he's a good outside shooter. Above average for big men, but they need his strength inside. Check out RJ Rizada on our Anticoba profile. Anticoba prepaid, now you're in. And probably Ryan Aranya would take home the, the trophy for most challenging <laughs> matchup, the answer. He's just, he's just so difficult to figure out. Eh? He's so difficult to break down. Yung, yung old school basketball lingo dyan, he's contra pelo. Eh? Di mo alam kung kailan magsisprint, di mo alam kailan magpapagal. He's, he's, he's very unorthodox, but yet very effective. That's why a lot of people have a difficult time defending him. So just to be official about the whole thing, Arwin Santos, 0 out of 5 from downtown. Okay. 0 for 5, but still a lot for a... First and, half pa lang, ah. and Naka five attempts, so three. Even the timing of that triple attempt, TJ, earlier, when, when mm. everybody was scrambling. Although, if that went in, it would have been would a have big, been big one, yeah. Yo piles up the points with 12 here in the first half. Double A violation in the possession arrow points to FBU. And help me out here, correct me if I'm wrong, but is this the first time Santos sat down in this game? Not no, he, no he, he sat Don't down earlier in the first, okay. yes. But and he hasn't sat down a lot. They 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 sat him down when they were still in the lead, 13 to six. Oh. And then Lasal made that comeback. Yep. Villanueva 
up and in. Oh, uh, he even looked like he still wanted to pass it off until he realized T.Y. Dang was nowhere near the ball and was realized that he could ever elevate above him. And he also has to realize, TJ, that nobody from that guard lineup can match up yeah. with him. I mean, Look, Kasho exactly. or Tang. Height and, 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 and physical build, walang mga match up Jonas. He's got to be able to break it down smartly and just avoid the turnovers. That's an offensive foul, That's says the call. referee. Smart Buddy hits the pre-play, caught that. Smart Buddy, the number one pre-paid service in the country. Referee Scarferio, Marabe and Atienza. So that's foul number two of Joseph Yo And Coach Fran says, hey, I got a 12-point lead. Three minutes to go in the first half. I don't want to risk it. I'm just going to put him out. And replace him with a guy who's been playing very well anyway. It's all of Villanueva. Yep. Look at the perimeter. Yes. Denial yes. defense yes. of Casal. I said it earlier. Yeah, love me. Fouls of Villanueva. But you can give that to them. Okay, lang. they can commit fouls every so often. That's a clear indication of how intense yes. Their defense is on the perimeter. Hirap na hirap sila mag execute. Hirap na hirap ang FAU to give those post entry passes. That is a great, that's great coverage for Cholo Villanueva, but according to the referee, he held on to the body, the torso of Eder Sandua, who was trying to post him up. So now Sandua finds his, himself on the 15th parallel line. For two dip shots, he knocks down the first, barely trickling in. So Dua, surprisingly, 41% from that area. He's a guy who's had a couple of impact games for FEU off the bench. He's a big guard, uh, or, or and pretty much even a, you'd say a big small forward. He's about 6'3 and a half, I'd say, close to 6'4. But he can move like a guard. Sal breaking the pressure. Resistance from FBU. Oh, nice pick and a nice pass and a nice roll by Jordan Villanueva. That was perfect basketball for Lasalle. You know, the very first time I saw Jordan Villanueva was he was in his third year in high school in Colegio de San Agustin. He was playing in the NBA and I saw a lot of potential in this kid. He was a big point guard, plays with a lot of smarts, and this guy has basketball smarts coming naturally to him. And what an assist also by Aquino, delivery, a candidate for assist of the game delivered by KFC. Happy to have you with us on a Thursday afternoon as La Salle wow. is doing wow. everything right here wow. in game number one of the finals. Awesome. They do it, they are just executing at will. Another turnover point there, yep. uh, DJ. Again, Arwin for his sixth triple attempt. Oh, yeah. Finally, fighting the mark. One out of six from beyond the arc. He's shooting 30.2% from that area. You know, I'm sure he's thinking, forget the stats. I don't care if my field goal percentage will be low. I have to score for oh, my yeah. team. I'm going to keep taking those shots. Well, they need it. Lasal is ahead by 11. Anya carving some space. Bang, trying to answer back. The tap going to Arwin Santos in a... J.R. Aquino tapping it from behind, so the ball will go to FBU with under two minutes remaining in game, or in the second quarter of game number one. Santos right there with a smart buddy three, the number one prepaid service in the country. Oops. Almost, <laughs> but not quite. Gutierrez <laughs> Sandua kept his eye on the ball and didn't leave Santos and Rizada alone in the backcourt. Abato giving space for Mark Eason. Saldua attempts the three, gets yeah. it to go! That's a huge confidence shot for him. He's got the shot. Saldua has a good shot from beyond the arc. And interestingly, he has a big height advantage of the guy who's guarding him, T.Y. Tang. He's got five inches of T.Y. Tang. So he should not be afraid to shoot that. FEU is looking to finish strong here in the second quarter. Tang with a wild shot. Nailang siya. So FEU trying to mount on a rally here, anchored by back-to-back -back triples by Santos and Saldua. Third personal on Cholo Villanueva, so that's a 6-0 run. Well, not really, but 6-2 run because after the timeout, there was two points from Ryan Aranya. Another smart buddy three, the number one prepaid service in the country. Eder Saldua who's shooting 20% from beyond the arc. And look at what a three can do for you. Yeah. And you know, interestingly, 
after the elimination round and the final four, FBU is the number one three-point shooting team in the league at 27.1%, although that's nothing great to be proud of because 27% is not a high yeah. percentage, but still you're the best in the league when it comes to three-point shooting. Now, all of a sudden, the two free throws from Saldua gets that lead down to six, 43-37. So I'll do a firepower from the bench. Aranya, nowhere to go. 15-footer is no-go. And now, Lasalle is struggling from the floor. And FBU yep. looking to finish the quarter strong. Jeffrey Chan, inside to Isip. Goes oh. to the other route. No way. Saldua so picks it up. Top of the circle, three. Bam! Wow. Eight straight points for Saldua. And Coach Bert Flores. Feeling it right now as LaSalle's lead has dwindled to three. And they're going to get the ball back, boom. They're going to get the last possession of this half. D.Y. Tang has put up two bad shots and one turnover. They find Chan underneath, but Cholo breaks up the play. And the difficulty for Coach Franz Fumaren in this run of FEU, it's so close to halftime, you don't want to burn a timeout. But in the span of one minute, Saldu has done the damage. Eight straight points for FEU. The number one prepaid service in the country is Smart Buddy. Another Smart Buddy three from Eder Saldua. Four out of seven from beyond the arc is FEU here in the second quarter, while LaSalle is zero out of three. Seventeen seconds remaining, and a ten-second shot clock for FBU. Difference of four seconds of a shot clock and a game clock. Rizada puts it on the floor. Finds Jeffrey what a pass. pass. What a pass. A left-handed left connection for FBU. Cutting down this lead to one. Well, we question, DJ. Does FBU have what it takes to come back? Well, they drop a 13-0 bomb. But interestingly, they did that run without Jonas Villanueva on the floor. The rookie point guard was not been able to contribute for the team in the first half. When Rizada and Chan and Saldua came in, they took over and brought their team back. And it was also when Joseph Yu moved out of the yep. ball game when FBU made this run as Jeffrey Chan goes through the reverse to cap off the 13-0 run. We got a ball game, folks. Game number one. Two teams separated only by a solitary point. We are at the Samsung Halftime Report, looking at the numbers, TJ, for both teams. Well, there you go. Take a quick look at it because the third quarter is underway, and I'll talk about it as we go through. Of course, Nassau doing the better job on the three-point field goal shooting. Three out of seven for 42% as compared to FD Sport of 12, but they hit what mattered the most, the last two big triples in the end of the first half. Second chance points, interestingly, has gone the way of LaSalle, 12 to 3. Normally, it's FEU, the number one team in the league in second chance points. They only have three second chance points in this game so far. All right, as we said, third quarter is underway here at the Big Dome. We are starting at 43-42. That is our score, and if you just tuned in, FEU jumping out, 13 to 6 lead. And then LaSalle putting on the turbo jets and then LaSalle leading as much as 14 and then FEU courtesy of Saldua and Santos finding the range from beyond the arc making a comeback in the last two minutes of the second quarter to cut the lead down to one at 43-42 and nobody has scored yet here in the third quarter we saw the perimeter points as we look at the scoring leaders for both teams, Yo starting off very strong. Casho off the bench, Saldua off the bench. Santos not shooting well, but still able yep. to get those eight points. No Mark Isip for uh, FU, FU and no Jun Kabatu yet Correct. for LaSalle. So those are the missing suspects there. If you're FU, you want to see Mark Isip on that list. You want to see Jonas Villanueva on that list too. All right, let's look at our... Uh, Candidates who will be the winner for the PS Bank Ultimate Fast Move of the Season. Find out October 6th during the UAP awarding ceremonies. You have Jeffrey Chan earlier, that's Joseph Yo. And there's another one coming at you. I think it will be L.A. Tenorio, another candidate for our PS Bank Fast Move. That's L.A. Tenorio. And a tough move. Woo. Classic L.A. October 6th, find out. 
The UAP awarding ceremony. Look out. Oh, Santos on three attempts. Wow. They continues. That's the whole, that's how crowd thought he traveled. Yep. Yo Wild on the drive. Loses possession, recovers, regains it. And a foul now is called. On the LaSalle, Green on Tabatu as he pushed away on Flores, on Paul Flores. So FEU on the ball to start this third quarter, especially defensively. They are very sharp, not allowing the usual, you know, comfortable rotation of the ball for LaSalle. They're challenging the passing lanes now. Their perimeter pressure is somewhat similar to what LaSalle did to them in the first half. And now they're back in the lead too, 44-43 after being down by as much as 14. Now here's that play of making Mark Nisip dribble, but they break it. Nisip sidestepping. Santos sticking it back. Oh, there, and I having something to say to Joseph Yule. <laughs> you know what, when you look at the halftime numbers, we see the perimeter points at 16 to 13. FU with the advantage. What turned it around was the 14 to 0 perimeter point marker in the second quarter. So that was the big thing. And nine of those perimeter points came in the last minute and a half from the three of Santos and the two triples of Saldua. Flores with a wild jumper. Santos picking it up and putting it back wow. in. And a foul to move of J.R. Aquino and Arwin Santos now starting to put pressure on Santos. needs a timeout here. Even though they're only down by three points, you could sense that Coach Francis itching to call a timeout. He does not want to allow FEU a big run here. There's a power move powered by New Revicon Ion Energy Drink with the Shung Ion and DJV. Carrying on to the third quarter. Talking about FEU. Yep. They did not allow the halftime break to stop their momentum, to stop their intensity. In fact, defensively, they even picked it up a couple of matches. They have been forcing turnovers on the NSU. Something that they did a bad job of because FU had 11 turnovers in the first half as compared to the side who had an awesome six turnovers only in the first half. That's a tough thing to do. In the championship series, six turnovers in the first half. That's awesome. And also, it's a tough thing to try to carry your momentum yep. in the second correct, half. Correct, correct. And especially at a long half time of being sacked. <laughs> A little bit longer than usual. Now the lead is four for FU. Yo fading away, nothing there. And FU starting to reassert their dominance. Inside, scoreless since 2.45, or only two points since 2.45 in the second quarter. DJ is DLSU. Now, it's the South third sort of implode. That is their third team foul right now. And this is where a leader is needed for the yes. LSU. Somebody to settle down the troops. And this is where Joseph Yo needs to step in. I mean, the no T.Y. Tang on the floor. You got Jamie Cash on the floor. Yo has got to do something to take control. What a pass. Big point pass. Perfect pass by Mark Isipel. Nodding his head up and down as he shoots backboard. Now Coach Franz Humana couldn't wait any longer. He badly needs this time out. If not, FU will run away with this one in the third. Versus LaSalle, but then Reva missing the three. A foul called on Alelu Flores as Rico Meyer Hopper came down with a rebound. You know, it's been a 22 to 2 run since wow. the 2.30 mark of the second quarter with Arwin Santos coming to life. 10 points in those, in those, uh, in those numbers. That's a few goals. We scored a 4 for 9 already. For FU. One out of seven for LaSalle. Vicky Dennis, what's happening? Let's bring her in for the Samsung courtside Ooh. update. I can't really hear you move, but earlier on, Coach <laughs> talked about Angels. He pointed out that today is a feast day of Saints Michael, Raphael, and Gabrielle. His point, we are each other's guardian angels on the court. He said, let's regroup when necessary. Let's guide each other and push the guy beside you and the guys on the bench. Contain and maintain is still the name of their game. The archers can allow FBU's second unit to step up. Also, Coach France still wants to see less hesitation and more aggressiveness on their offense. On defense, he wants to see more hustle to stop the Tams fast break opportunities. Boom. Thank you very much, Mickey. Well, you said it yourself. You heard Coach Franz come out and they want a little more aggressiveness in the offense. And yep. Joseph Yo finally with an aggressive move. You know, they were very tentative going into the last two minutes of the 
second quarter and the opening minutes here in the third. As you see, the Sea of Green on the Anadeth of Are they like celebrating an anniversary, the big moment? On Saturday, it's the 30th year of the Thrilla in Manila. Wow. Right back in history. Muhammad Ali and uh, Joe Frazier. And after he left, they were so happy, they built a ball in his name, Ali Ball. That's wow. another, oh. Oh, no, no foul. No foul. Interesting, Nikasio had his back to Villanueva falling down. He forced the momentum of Villanueva to cross backward, and there's no foul. Well, interesting non-call there, but nonetheless, another interesting note is the fact that Lasal already is in penalty group. But last foul of Kasha put them in the penalty with 5.30 to go here in the third quarter. Lasal is behind by four. They were ahead by 14. That was after FPU was ahead by seven. So it's been a game of spurts and momentum. Like runs, you know, run by Lasal end of the first quarter until the middle part of the second, and then end of the second until this middle part of the third, it's the run of FEU. Bert Flores looking for his first title in the UAAP. Speaking of FEU, let's go to Yvette Gavieras for this Samsung courtside update. Yvette? For the FEU Tamarons, this is a very important game. If they can win this game, then it would be to their advantage. So Coach Bert Flores told his boys that they must be showing an aggressiveness and perseverance that a real Tamarell has. They have reached a final round and they must not waste this opportunity. Can't each of them must play with pride and believe that they can do it. And they obviously played with a lot of pride and now you can't question the comebacking ability of FEU as they have blasted LaSalle 22 to 2 as we mentioned. Thank you, Yvette Gavieres, supporting for FEU. Heather Saldua, nowhere to go. Find Santos over wow. everybody else. Wow. He even looked like he was over the board. That's how high the elevation was on that jump shot. That is tough. When Arwin Santos goes as high as that, and then the release, you have to also consider not only the leap, but his release is... Correct. Yung, yung extension ng hands. Watch this. Let's Watch this. Let's see that. that again on our Smart Buddy Instant wow. Replay. Smart Buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. And after struggling in the first part, Arwin now... Struggling no more. Coming 17 back. points, Boom. And parang hindi na sabi mo nga kanina, he was trying too hard in the first part. Like settle down the set. He let the game come to him now. Meyer Hoffer, very tentative. No confidence in that move against Arwin Santos. You gotta be a little more decisive when you're up against Arwin Santos. Yep. Like what Benitez and Joe did. Joe did, exactly. You gotta go right to him. Straight up in there. Six point lead for FEU. Joseph Yo spinning, setting up Meyer Hopper. That's the way to do it if you're Rico. Go straight, straight up. Don't go for the dunk. Don't go for the laying in the rim. You go for the board. But once it hits the board, he's not going to buy them a block. Because once you touch it, it might be going like Another no foul. Huh? Wow. No foul there. An offensive foul. Actually, an offensive foul. If we can get this on the replay, Yo was crouched down. And Santos just went up for the ball. What an interesting call here. And first Chris Torres, here's Yo, with his hand out even. I don't know if, if anything, that's a let go situation. If anything. Yeah. And uh, caught again on our Smart Buddy Instant Replay. Smart Buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. Now, LaSalle behind, still by four, at 53 49. Casho against Villanueva. Casho with nine points off the bench in the first half. They go back to Yo. Yo again driving. This time going hard against Owen Santos. And he's doing exactly what he has to do. Earlier we mentioned someone's got to be a leader. Someone's got to take charge. Still no sign of T.Y. Tang on the floor. And Coach Francis gave that green light to Joseph Yo to take over. And earlier, Joseph Yo set up Rico Meyer Hopper. This time he went straight at Owen Santos. A lot of contact being allowed by the referees right now. Well, it's the finals. Yep. Meyer Hopper. Sending it out to Benitez from 18 feet. Very, very sharp shot by Mark Benitez. And if that were Jun Cabato, that would have been his shot. His comfortable shot from 15 feet. But Benitez, not as consistent as Cabato would be from there. Foul by Villanueva. I'll make that foul on. Yes, foul by Villanueva on Villanueva. 
The rest will have to take control of this game. There's a lot more emotion coming into play. Oh, what a Look at that. What, what a nice setup pass. job, yes. Meyer Hopper knew what to do now the second time around. A candidate for assist of the game delivered by KFC. And now, Yo and Flores. As Flores tries to get into the head of Yo. You remember Flores from last year against Macaragona? Yep. And he made an impact last year <laughs> in the game that they won. He was the surprise player off the bench, similar to what Saldua has done today. So much promise for this kid. Will play his last year for FU next year. Coach France Milan is seeking his sixth title in eight finals appearance. Lasal has gone to the finals four out of the last make that five out of the last six times. FEU four out of the last six times. The ball will remain with FEU as the possession arrow points to them. Boom Catales, TJ Manoto, Yvette Gavieres and Mickey Dellis for ABS-CBN Sports. We're glad to have you with us Thursday afternoon live of the Big Dome over Studio 23. Also saying hello to everybody watching us on the Filipino channel. Aranya is back. Aranya, so far in this ball game, has three personal fouls. And uh, as we see in our Attic Mobile profile, Attic Mobile prepaid, now you're in his most challenging matchup, the shooter from National University. Yeah. Who we keep on calling out today. <laughs> Rezada puts it on the floor. Santos, dead shot from there. Good setup. A nice simple setup there. Finding the traffic and finding the open man. Santos with 19 points, 9 rebounds in this game. A typical, shall I say, MVP like performance from Arwin. Casho thought about it. Dribbles once. Nothing there. And Santos with a double double now. 1 1. Saldua sets up Fernandez. And Benedict Fernandez gives FEU a seven-point lead at 58-51. You know what's disheartening for LaSalle? If you're LaSalle and if you're Coach Franz Humaren, that fast break came off a missed outside shot. You'd forgive that if it came off a turnover. But if you miss a shot and they beat you three and one, that should not happen. Joseph Yo trying to take matters into his own hands, overshoots that one. And Santos comes away with his 11th rebound of the game. He can shoot from there if he wants to. But now he's not. He's taking smarter shots this time around. Yo picks it up. The tap going to RB Manahas. And let's see, no, it's a good call. Over and back violation. Manahas came from the backcourt, did not establish position in the front court to get that loose ball. But what a game, Boom. What a game. Woo. This is game number one of the finals. They were calling traveling for that one. But it stays as a Milo fast break. Brought to you by Milo. Drink Milo every day. The Green Archers who are behind by 7, 58-51. Casho chased around. Fakes, fires. Nothing there. 146 to play in the third quarter. 13 rebounds for MPU, 9 for LaSalle so far in the third, and a forced move. It's uncharacteristic for RJ Rizada to come up with a play like that. Well, okay. Kahit papano, LaSalle's defense holding up, oh. as you see, former Tamarao. Yes, Vic Pablo. Vic Pablo, he was the once teammate of uh, Johnny, Johnny Barrientos. Barrientos. Oh, yes. Then coached by uh, Coach Amador, who won the UAP crown back then. Dwight Tang, who has not made much of an impact here for LaSalle. Kasha recovering, sending it out to Aranya. They have 10 on the shot clock. Talking about LaSalle. Aranya finding wow. a way inside in major traffic. Well, now with Arvin Santos on the bench, you see a lot more penetration attempts by LaSalle. Walang shot blocker. Lalo na pag nalabas na si Mark Isip, mga has does not have the kind of elevation and intimidating force that Arvin Santos will have. Now on this end, a foul 40 feet from the basket from LaSalle, near the penalty, free throw. Look at a power move powered by New Revicon Ion. Energy drink with Dishon Ion and maybe 
Prince will not have recognized it. That you just made sends back in the best slasher yep. in the Joseph league. Yo. Joseph Yo. One eleven to play. Game number one, very important. Since 1994, when the best of three finals took format, the team which won game one went on to win the series eight out of 11 times. That's 73%. Now, since 2000, all teams which won game one captured the title. Lasalle is four and two in the finals when it wins game one, while FU is two and zero if they win game one. You're a numbers junkie. That one, I'm sure you enjoy. Yep. Araña, the Benitez. They're looking for Yo, but Flores is on him like a leech. But he sees daylight, and Yo there attacks right away. Oh, what a, Santos, it's a red carpet for Joseph Yo. What a read by Franz Pumar, and, and, and oh, of course by you also. The fact that there was no Arwin, Yo saw green. There's a simple way of executing this. Aside from telling them to drive, 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 you have to pull out Mark Isip. There's only one guy you gotta pull out. One out of Arvin Santos. Eh? So whoever's being guarded by Mark Isip has to play the perimeter. Pull him out, and everybody's got that green light to go drive and challenge Mangahas, who is not a leaper. And another power move powered by New Ragaton High on Energy Drink. With the shot high on, and a chance for maybe a four-point play, a five-point play as LaSalle. Retains possession, Arwin Santos cooling his heels. And he's got to get his time on the bench to rest him up and make him ready and fresh for the fourth quarter to finish this game out for them. He does average 30 minutes wow. a ball game coming into the finals. Tang, Araña with 17 on the shot clock. Araña again, stopping. Oh, napulot ni kabago. It's better to be lucky than good. That's what they say at times. So I don't know, would you credit that as an assist by Aranya? <laughs> Some to the stat, guys. And again, you'll take it. Why? Because you're only behind by two now if you're LaSalle. And that's an offensive foul. Fourth personal on Benedict Fernandez. That's something that Ryan Aranya will, has always and will always give Coach Franz Humare that steady defense. Now, Coach Bert Morris, even though there's 30 seconds left on the clock, Lapilito ni balik si Santos. Why? Because he wants to end this third quarter with a bang, well, at least a bucket. Well, Flores and Yo are being separated by referee Carperio. And Aranya, of all people, went up to you pacifier. and told him to pacify himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to try to go to Joseph. Or Ryan, we'll see. And that's a foul. Not a, not a good one because he's not realizing they're in the penalty. You don't give him a foul coming off a screen and you give the guy two free throws to a True. team who's trying to catch up. Plus, mainit ang mata sa inyo dahil nagigirean kayo. So alam mo babantayan ka na eh. But then again, that is really the role of uh, Flores. Not to foul, but I mean, really to, try to, get, yes, yeah. to try to get into the head of the the stars like Yo and Cardona back in season 67. Yo today has equaled Arwin Santos's output to 19 points as we saw. Uh, we just are looking at Mr. Beaver Lopez right here in our row, actually, DJ. Rooting for LaSalle, obviously. Yo ties the ball game. Guess what? That is only the second deadlock of the game, Philippines. So hang on. 20 seconds left in the third quarter. I'm sure we're going to be hanging on for a riveting fourth quarter coming up. 10 seconds left. D.Y. Tang still with Villanueva. Five seconds left. Villanueva looking at Rizada. Shoots the three. Short. And that will do it for the third. And guess what? We are back at square one. No quarter is given. None taken. LaSalle and FBU, game number one of the finals for season 68 of the UAP. We are tied 59 all. One quarter is underway in the Philippines. They're at the big dome for game number one of the finals of season 68 of the UAP. And as I said earlier, no quarters given, none taken. 59 all. And 
DJ, no team has scored over 70 points against FEU this season. Wow. Well, this looks interesting. Yeah, they, they'll, they'll break that, but it doesn't, I don't think that will automatically mean that they will win. Yes. Isip, still no goal on his second attempt. It is Yo Aranya Benitez Tang and Kabatu in a foul called by referee Garberio. Interestingly, that was a quick double team on Yo on the perimeter. I don't know if that was just reactionary or instinct by Rizada to help out. But that's the ploy of Coach Bird Forest right now to just take the ball out of Joseph Yo's hands. That's a Jack and Jill fantastic moment. Life is fun. See Agnes Tapia somewhere there. <laughs> Former side reporter for La Salle. In the meantime, Kabatu unable to get the ball to stay down, so we're still not moving at 59. How much gas does Joseph Yo still have in his tank? There's also a question here. He's had a whole lot of minutes. Yo crossing over. Villanueva takes it away from him. And an easy bucket to break the deadlock. That's been rare for either team. Yes. In the third quarter, it was much more controlled. We didn't see that many turnovers. The ball will remain with LaSalle. With 15 seconds on the shot clock. That's, look at the Samsung steal. Samsung, it's not hard to imagine. And a completed one of that as Villanueva easily scoops it up. In it. 10 seconds shot clock. They go to Kabatu from 15. The elbow extended, pulls out. A weak pass to Aranya. They have three to shoot. Aranya is blocked. And a turnover for LaSalle. Isip all alone for the easy two. And a hot start again by FBU here in the fourth. Yo against three. Wow. Four FBU Tamaraos. Gone. The no cheer offense by the Ninja. Totally gone. And nobody could just stop him. You think he would be trapped yeah. here at the sideline, but then like a blur. If they wanted to trap him, that was the intention of FU, but he just run right by them. That crossover burned to Tamarhaus. Two minutes gone by here in the fourth. Santos knocks it down for another three. 22 points for Arwen Santos. Taps the ball out of bounds. Now this fourth quarter will boil down to the guys who can execute better and smarter. Guys, who, the guys who will take the smarter shots will be the ones who have the advantage in this final quarter. Smart buddy three by Arwen Santos, the number one prepaid service in the country. In the face of Mark Benitez. Yo loses it, tries to recover it. FBU with the ball. And it's still with FBU. So that's a third turnover of LaSalle already with barely two and a half gone by in fourth. Cause for concern for Mickey Dellis and the rest of the Green Archers. Let's throw it to her for our Samson courtside update. Composure and poise are essential for the Archers this quarter as they will fight this out until the very end. Giving up is not an option for the Archers. You know these guys move and they are determined on exhausting all possible options to take control of this game. Give 100%, Coach Ed. If there's such a thing, 110%. Let's give our all is basically what he's asking from his team. Let the crowd inspire you, Coach Ed's Archers. Listen to their support and take it to heart. Last few minutes, last few moments of unrelenting sacrifice for DLSU until next Thursday. Boom. Thank you very much, Mickey Dennis. Well, you know, there are, there are people who zone out the crowd and there are people who get pumped up by it. Six seconds again remaining in the shot clock of La Salle and Santos reading that play very well. Good read of the passing lane there as he saw where Ryan Aranya wanted to go. Good defense so far by FU to start this fourth quarter. Three turnovers for La Salle in the fourth, one for FU. Rizada. And a second third over now for FU. Aranya is gone. Forget about it. You know, Aranya's got a lot of speed. A lot of people don't know. Receivingly fast. I think Aranya is quick. Santos uh -oh. sends it to LaSalle, but they get it back. Whoop. Aranya just trying to break wow. up the play. Isip picks up the dribble, puts it up, but not in. Wow. And wow. a scramble. Bodies are all over 
the place. And this finally, is, the refs call something. This is what the Woo. UAP is all about. Foul called on Ederson. Dua. Robert Santos actually called for a foul. Let's look at the Samsung steal. With Samsung, it's not hard to imagine. And Araya, Aranya rather, <laughs> sticking out the tongue on RJ Rizada before the layup. That's a classic Araya Araya. And then the Helter Skelter play here. Arwin Santos knew that he had, what, a second to give up that ball. And now Coach Bert Flores will shuffle his men and try to give Arwin his rest. Oh. He's going to sit down for about, I'd say, at most a minute, a minute and a half. True. We have 6.30 left, and LaSalle is breathing down the necks of FEU. Three points separating these two contenders. FEU showing a 1-2-2 two, two zone here. Let's go to Yvette Cavieres for a Samsung courtside update this time. Yvette? This game isn't over yet, guys. With more than five minutes left, there are still a lot of things to happen. So don't be confident. Avoid relaxing and stay focused. Coach Bert Flores tells his boys that they must continue challenging the archers' shots. Also, avoid committing fouls. This is the last quarter, so we must work and play as a team. Boom. Thank you very much. Well, they just committed a foul there, the third on Francis Barceliano. Thank you, Yvette Cavieres. Well, as we've said, DJ, this game has been a matter of spurts. Yep. Oh, a miscommunication between Kabatu and Joseph Yo. If Yo had continued that first step, he would have been gone. He would have gotten that backdoor play. And sometimes it does happen. So now that's turnover number four. Four for the side. Four for the side. And turnover three for FEU. Villanueva goes to Yo. Oh, and an offensive what foul. A late call. And nullifies the layup. An coach, offensive foul. Coach Franz Pumar and his limit together with assistant coach Jack Santiago. Fourth personal, the fifth personal on Cholo Villanueva. He's gone. And that's a big play because Yo was alone for the two. Let's look at that again. And Here's you the be problem. the judge. There's the fall. After the layup comes in, that's when the referee lifts his hand and says, Oh, I saw an offensive foul. Bit of a late call, but still. Close to call. Very close to call. Could have gone either way. All caught on our Smart Buddy instant replay. Smart Buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. That could have been just a one point lead for Correct. FBU, but call will stick. And Mark Eason with another turnover. So, five but turnovers. Actually, that third considered turnover in the five. Yes, so, five four, four for FEU. We're not at halfway through the fourth. Now the jitters are getting yes. tighter. This is why it gets tighter for support for their day. That's why I said those who would execute smarter yes. in the fourth will win this game. Who will have the last spurt? Lasalle has shown its resiliency here in this game. That was a nice play inside. Give and go. Kabatu out of the wing. He cuts right to the center of the paint. Baliktad naman si Iyo na marang nagpasa ngayon. Villanueva finds a crease. No goal tending was caught up. And Lasalle player on onto the net. And it shook the rim. And a foul is called instead. And I think it's on Rico Meyerhofer. And if it's on the, oh, it's on Kasha, Meyerhofer with the insurance <laughs> so that the ball won't go up. And boy, what an insurance. For Kasha, that is his fourth personal foul already. 66-65, what a treat Woo! for all you basketball fans out there. Arwin Santos, as we mentioned, just a tad bit over a minute rest. He's back here. Right down to the 6.30 mark. A minute and eight seconds. A minute and eight seconds of game time. But of real time, I'd say it's about three to four minutes. Or maybe even five because of the fouls and the laws. T.Y. Tang still a non-factor. So Not far. a good game for T.Y. Tang. Good. Scoreless today. And he has seen a lot of the bench for Coach Franz Romano. That's why Franz has been relying a lot on J.B. Cash and Joseph Yo in their backcourt. Little separation now between these two teams. as Mark Eason connects on both Three throws, Isip with 10 points, together with six boards. Another case of miscommunication Ooh. between Casho and Yo this time. And Yo did not continue the cut again. So third over number six for LaSalle in the fourth. Lead is three. Halfway point of the fourth quarter. 
Villanueva for a three. That's short. Santos tapping it away. You notice both teams are playing very tight. Yes. Parang nakalimutan nila how they played so well in the first three quarters. Parang they forgot what the ingredients were of their respective runs. Careful to make a mistake. Yep. Kasha now. Back to Yo. Yo has not looked to shoot Ooh. the three today. He has looked to try with almost every possession. Fourth personal called on Edward Saldua. Ang ganda pa naman ng basa ni Santos dun sa spin ni Yo. But that puts FU now in the penalty. That is their fourth foul. So every foul thereafter, the yellow shirts will be free throws for LaSalle. So a fresh shot off to work with for LaSalle. Yo against Saldua goes to his right. Yo sets a fire hopper for the short slam. And the teammates of Saldua were aware that he had four fouls. Oh, and to he need a defense and they helped. That left my offer open from six feet. And lead again dwindles to one. Saldua is way open here on the other side. But they ignore him and Kabatu takes it away for turnover number five for FBU. So that time around the 2-3 zone of LaSalle surprised FBU a bit and they didn't know how to rotate the ball. Aranya losing it. Kabatu picking it up for a three. It's way off the mark and a foul called by Rico Meyer Hopper. That's a, that's a good call. Obviously, he was hanging on to Easy. Holding him down. Fourth foul of Meyer Hopper. Now, that's interesting. Will that limit his defensive abilities? Will that limit his aggressiveness in going for the blocks against FU? Well, it will because. I thought he was going to be pulled out. Yeah, I not. thought so too. Francis Benitez sticking has, with him. He's played well for uh, yep. LaSalle. Defensively. He's been there, yes. Under four minutes to play. 68-67 with FBU in the lead. And with possession. Jeffrey Chan. Go back to FBU Benitez. playing big. Boom. They got Santos, Isip, and Pangahas on the floor at the same time. Playing big, but they're playing very careful right yep. now, DJ. As Chan releases the three, so oh, look at that! Sticking it back, and you saw that. And that's what you get when you play big. You get mismatches. Nobody backs out Arvin Santos. Cesar Bayani Bayani, joining the crowd that has packed the big dome. And what a shot of the capacity crowd here. Robert Ortega, also in the house. Obviously cheering for the guys in green. Yep. Who have possession of the ball and are down by three, by the way. Chan on Joseph Yo. Abato looking for Joseph Yo and a foul oh. away from the Ooh. ball. So that's going to be two free throws for Jun Abato. As we mentioned, both teams now in the penalty. So it's going to boil down to no hand check. three throws. Yes. But boom, but in more. In the first quarter, a lot of shots of LaSalle were quick perimeter shots off the screen tira, off the pass tira's outside. And they're, they're much more careful, they're much more patient, looking for the right time to make the passes and to execute for the best shot. It's not like a fourth quarter. It's not like a mistakes. Mo. Every possession is crucial. Yep. And that is an understatement. Referee Garferio will go to Coach Bert Flores for a little clarification. I think they're going to give two more. Is this concerning? I think so. Oh, and Kabato misses again. There's the Daddy proud father. A little disappointed, I don't think, with the free throw. But, uh, oh yes, I'm sure he is disappointed. With Miss. The miss. Skabato is a decent shooter from that area. 73%. Makes one out of the official two. Nine points for Kabato, four rebounds. That's way below his average of 7.6 in terms of rebounding. The lead is down to two. They give it up to Chan. They recover, but Santos oh, is. Oh. Blocked and fouled. And that will be what a 
good. Lucky for Meyer Balfour that wasn't on him, because if that were on him, he'd be gone. Santos and Yo continue to jaw at each other in the meantime. A cannon power shot of the game brought to you by Cannon. Delighting you always. Arwin Santos missing the first of the two free throws. <laughs> That's Yo. close to taunting, so the referee warns him about that. That is practically taunting. Seven. Good patience by the ref of not calling a key on that. Look at that. 72% from that area. Arwin Santos misses both. And maybe Kabato got into his head. <laughs> Could be. But, you know, nevertheless, he has 24 points, 13 rebounds. Two blocks, two assists, two steals. Yo again with a setup. Meyer oh, Hover is man. rejected by Arwin Santos. You're kidding me. Where did he come from? Oh, but FBU squanders the opportunity. You know what? I don't think Villanueva should have tried to save the ball because I think it was stopped by Lasalle. By, by Yo, yeah. I, I, I might be mistaken. Wow, what a wow. Santos came from behind the other guy. He was behind Mangahas. Look at that elevation. Oh, man. A polo shot clock. Life's a whole lot cooler with Polo. Three shot clocks already for Arwen. It's over his wow. average. And again, going back to what I said about Mayhoff earlier, when Santos is there, don't go for the dunks. Go for the board. Because if you go for the rim, he'll block you. He'll find you. Yo accelerating and is fouled early. <laughs> Yo what, knew what to do at the time he got the ball. He knew what he wanted yep. to do. Drive Straight hard. to the basket. A penalty on FU, so no, no, no brainer right there. You go straight to the basket. Don't force those outside shots anymore. Not unless they present themselves and they're wide open. It's amazing how this Coliseum just goes silent. After every whistle, everybody just keeps quiet. Yes. The noise, the noise, the whistle, boom, boom, he's quiet. <laughs> Waiting for the announcement of what happened. Guess what? Down a one-point lead. Nobody has scored 70 Struggle. points or more against FBU. Struggling T.Y. Tang still on the bench. And I don't think he'll make his way back in this game. At least if this goes, at least in just regulation. Yeah, Masao's not doing so bad. This is only our third deadlock, TJ. 70 all, 235 remaining. Boy, did you get your money's worth for this oh, one. Oh, yeah. Villanueva trying to extricate from Casho. Mark Isip loses the spheroid. He just lost a slippery ball there. That was his shot. Mark Isip has that catch oh, yeah. and shoot from 10 feet. And he had, the, he had the distance from his defender to take that. Now, since losing the lead in the third, early in the third quarter, LaSalle has not tasted it again. Let's see what happens in this possession. 2.15 remaining. Each possession very crucial, and you see it in the execution. Yo, again, accelerating! And dismantles the FBU defense all that time, Arwin Santos did not go up for help defense. Yo just went right to the basket, and nobody else challenged him. 206. This place is rocking. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what you live for. Games like these. 72-70. Nassau in the lead with 206 remaining in game number one of the finals. The season 68 of the UAB live over Studio 23. Boom Gonzalez, DJ Bonotto. Thank you for watching us over Studio 23 and those watching us at TFC at Kitamuraman na puro puro on Araneta Coliseum. Possession with FEU and a crucial one, TJ. Wow. This is going to be big. And if I can quote Coach Robert Flores after their 70-69 win against Asal in the second round, he said, we did not execute in the end game. It was their defense that made them win. They have to prove to him now that they can execute and come out with a win. Last two minute mark. Brought to us by Samsung. It's not hard to imagine with Samsung. Turnover and a foul committed by an FEU player. Kabatu picks up Mark Isip in a sporting gesture. What happened there, DJ, for FEU? They had a good shot. They had an open three. They had a defensive rebound, but the kick out was not to a teammate of theirs. It was straight to Kabatu. So execution-wise, it was there. 
It's through hitting the ball to the basket. Lasalle has not beat an FEU this season. Aranya now. But then again, sorry. You know, you don't force your outside shots at this stage. But as if they present themselves and they're open taken. But still, both teams are in the penalty. So both teams have to take it to the basket, try to get those layups. If not, get the foul, get to the foul line. A minute 37 remaining. Aranya is zero out of one. That is his first trip to the free throw line. FVU two out of four. Lasalle three out of five from the line here in the fourth. It's tough, huh? To go to the free throw line for the first time. The yes. first time. That is tough. Aranya shooting 64% from that area. Good enough for a, an odd three-point lead for Lasalle with a long ways to go, believe me. 137 to play. Jonas Villanueva. Marquis is trying to talk to him. I don't know about the substitution. You take out a veteran, RJ Desada, for Saldua. I know you need Saldua there defensively, but this is a play where you want to break the, break the press right now. Villanueva gets two green shirts, finds Mark Isip. Isip enters their attack zone, gives up the dribble. Trying to look for a friend. Up, Joseph Yo breaking up the play. Saldua struggling. Wow. Yo taking it away and a wow, foul call. A foul. On. Saldua. No foul was called when Yo bumped him at the mid-court line when he tried to get that ball. Which, you know, you have to, okay, regardless of what the call is, EJ. Saldua coming in at this time, you, you made the point. Decision. Not a good decision. I don't think so. Five balls for Ender Saldua and a crucial turnover. 121 to play. 73-70. Might have been an untimely substitution for Coach Bert Flores. Of course, you don't want to second guess him, but now Saldua is out of the ballgame with five personal fouls. FEU DJ with 10 turnovers in Ouch. the quarter. For LaSalle? Six turnover points, seven for LaSalle, two for FEU. But in the Nueva, a great defense by Casio. Santos has not touched the ball, dude, for quite some time for FEU. We got to get him the ball. In the Nueva gives it to Santos for a three. Ties the ball game only for the fourth time. That is the third triple of Arwin wow. Santos. And he made me look good, just as I said it. Joseph Yo attacks. Meyerhofer nowhere to go. Casho. Three second call. Big call by the ref. Very sharp though. With all the commotion, you kind of forget those things. But three second call, turnover by Lasal. And we are tied, Philippines, at 73. Woo! with 30.7 seconds remaining and Arwin Santos with 27 points on this Smart Putty 3, the number one prepaid service in the country. It's going nuts here, the Big Dome, as we are tied at 73 with FBU in possession, 30.7 seconds left, both teams in the penalty, FBU no more timeouts, LaSalle has one, you do the math. This is an interesting situation, Boom. 6.7 seconds differential game clock and shot clock. FEU ball. Do they hold out for the very last shot possible in the shot clock, like let's say, with three seconds remaining? So you give Nasal what, seven, eight seconds to execute whether you make a shot or not? Or you played safer and shoot with about six seconds left so you have a chance for your own offensive rebound? Well, let's see what Coach Bert Flores has mapped out. They have possession. They're trapping Arwin Santos with the Nueva. Will he break it? Barely. Yes. Barely making it. Wow. And the big dome is already standing up. Everybody on their feet. 14 on the shot clock. Six on the shot clock, rather. Of FEU. Arwin throws up the three. Make that mark. Oh, oh, what a follow up. And Arwin Santos oh, sticking it nowhere. back. And a foul. Is there a foul? Was there a foul? The referee's motion and counted. I don't, no, no, I don't think it was a foul. They're just motioning his timeout, but it counted. Arwin wow. Santos with the biggest five points probably of his life. Woo! The three-point shot 
And he shoot it back out of nowhere. Scrambling from the perimeter. If you get another replay, he scrambled from the three-point line. 13 rebounds, five offensive, 5.5 seconds remaining. Possession with LaSalle, but the inbound is from way back. So let's see what's going to happen. Ball is in play. Casho takes it. Casho looks at the clock. Casho reads Ooh. two seconds. He puts it up. Oh, FBU wow. escaping with a two-point victory in game number one. Our Gatorade best player of the game, Arwin Santos. Let me just protect myself here. 29 points, 14 rebounds, but the crucial five points in the end, TJ. Awesome performance by Arwin Santos. He deserves every bit of credit for this win. Our Gillette Vector, sixth man of the game. Impact in the second quarter when he came in, Eder John Saldua. We give you the assist that's best of them all. What a delivery by Yo to Meyerhofer. Assist of the game delivered by KFC. KFC also delivers what you're craving for. Check out our Milo Energy player of the game. Uh, Mark Isip is the chosen one. Milo every day. The bench, Mark Isip coming with a lot of energy. You have to choose just one. This was the fast break earlier. Saldua over to Fernandez. Samson best play with Samson. It's not hard to imagine. McDonald's best rebounder, that is Arwin Santos. Brought to you by McDonald's Big Mac. Love to throw 14 rebounds. But the big one, five points down the stretch. The three-point shot and the stick. Well, that will do it for us. For Yvette Gavieres, Mickey Delis, and DJ Manoto, like Alneri, I'm Boom Gonzalez. And the rest of the ABS-CBN sports crew, thanking you for watching this coverage of the finals of the UAB on Studio 23. Good night.